Yo, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you happen to be, anywhere in the world. Are you tired of feeling unworthy? This is my question to you. And if you are watching this or you're seeing me for the first time, my name is Dr. Nima Romani. I've been a chiropractor for the last 18 years, helping people primarily with stress-related disorders, realizing that if I just went upstream, I could help people deal with the root cause of why they get sick, stuck, stressed in the first place and help give tools of transformation rather than consistently just dealing with the end stages of stress. So I help people who are stuck in transitional anxiety, stuck in a limbo. Should I stay? Should I go? What's next for me? And because I went through that with my career, went through that in relationship, I feel like I'm a become an expert in helping people get to the underlying root cause of why they're stuck so that they can up level themselves whether it be a health event, whether it be a relationship thing. And so one of the things that came up with a, a client call of, of ours, it was this concept of unworthiness, this concept of I'm not good enough. I really discovered looking at my own life, something very powerful that if you don't really understand this at its root, your chances of actually being able to create a business, to create a relationship, that you feel very fulfilled by is thrown out the window. Without getting this one thing right, you settle for less. Without getting this one thing right, you don't have power and freedom and self-expression to set boundaries in a relationship. And you start to fall into these unconscious patterns. You have walls up and you lack authenticity. You have anxiety all the time. You don't feel like you're connected with yourself. There was a client who was going through this and the way that it showed up was a, an inauthentic relationship in his marriage and specifically not feeling like he's getting ahead in his business and so i want you to tell me if you can relate to this this feeling of i'm not worthy that affects your ability to produce to connect comes from an old pattern an old story in this case this gentleman when he was a young man he had an event happen with his uh with a with another gentleman and so it was kind of like this one guy when he's in his early 20s an older guy gets him drunk he blacks out wakes up one wakes up and all of a sudden from that moment uh discovers that he was you know taken advantage of and he had evidence in his body and from that place, he was so riddled with guilt and shame that it was this little mind virus that entered his brain and it pretty much ran every single relationship and belief in himself ever since. So for about 30 years, he's been feeling like, I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy of love, I'm a bad person. And he's been putting up a mask to cover, to cover the truth. So you probably will resonate or relate to that when you can see yourself um, pretending, um, hiding who you are. These types of people generally, when as a chiropractor, when I would see them, their body language was riddled and mired with shame, kind of slumped forward, very difficult making eye contact. When you talk to that person, they look away and and completely dissociated, like you, you, they go off on tangents. In other words, when you experience such a guilt and a shame, that feeling of guilt and shame in your body is so um, painful that it actually feels safer to dissociate. So we then dissociate, we then go off on tangents, we are never present, um, we, 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 we can't really sit and be present in our bodies because the feeling of pain, the feeling of shame and guilt is so painful. So that then becomes this little belief system that I'm not worthy of love. So what we did on our call was something that I really want to, uh, to offer you was to go back there and to re-experience that, ex uh, that experience, but from a whole different perspective. And here's what we did. We went back and we saw how in that moment, um, that feeling of I'm not worthy of love, that, uh, that, that shame and that guilt, what happened was we got him to actually experience the other side. 
This was a very, very challenging thing for the ego to do. Because in every single event, you have two sides, two sides going on simultaneously. During a trauma, during something where you feel an incredible amount of confusion, guilt and, guilt and shame about, there's two parts to it. Like when somebody dies, you have a grief that the person has died and a relief that they're no longer suffering or a relief that you're no longer dealing with the parts of them that you're not really crazy about. The problem is both sides are there. And if you don't acknowledge both sides, you start to create a confusion. And that's what was going on with him. In that moment, there was a confusion because on one hand, there was an attraction and a curiosity. And on the other hand, there was a feeling of betrayal. So what I had him do was to actually, in his body, experience both sides. And he into, that's why we call integrating the shadow. He integrated both sides and he gave himself permission to tell the truth that he was just as curious and fascinated as he felt betrayed. And he was just as innocent as he felt guilt and shame. So we had him integrate the two sides and through the process of the overview, we got him to actually see that there was some huge benefits to it. And before this event, he was kind of ambiguous with his sexuality, but he had the gift of having this experience. After that, he then realized, yeah, you know what? I'm no longer ambiguous. I tried that on, I'm gonna go full on towards the one side and I'm fully straight. And the interesting thing about that is one of the things he values the most is his wife and kids. And the way that he his superpower is how he's empathetic to other people and how he's really great at protecting his, his family. And he literally saw that it was because of that event that he is who he is today that it was because of that, not in spite of that, but because of that. And I asked him this question, I said, well, who do you have to forgive? And he basically said, well, I guess there's nothing to forgive. And because he's religious, I actually asked him this question, can you see that God works in mysterious ways? And he was like, yeah. He came on the group call afterwards and he shared with everybody how he feels free and liberated from that. And that's where healing comes. And once that story of unworthiness changes, I asked him, so what becomes possible to you now in your work? It's like, well, I feel power and freedom now. I feel like I can, you know, I feel worthy of holding on to resources that come my way. And the reason why I wanted to share that is if you're struggling and feeling like you're hitting a brick wall consistently again and again, and these patterns keep coming, it's usually check in for a story of unworthiness that happened early on. And there was a moment where something happened where you then dissociated from your body because it didn't feel safe because of the shame and the guilt, number one. And number two, you then concluded and made a meaning that you're not worthy that you're not worthy of love, that you're not um, good enough, that you're basically um, broken and you're just undesirable and nobody's ever gonna love you. And that unconsciously gets stuck and stored in our nervous system and the only way out is by uncovering them. Because if you don't get that right and change those stories, you're gonna pass the trauma along to the children and you're gonna live with kind of rocks in your backpack as you're trying to climb the mountain of life. And so it's critical to shift that feeling of unworthiness. And if you're tired of feeling unworthy, look closely at an old story. And that client of ours today, he basically was committed. He was like, I see how this story of victimhood from that e event that happened, I'm still carrying it with me and I'm carrying the guilt and the shame and the unworthiness. And the way that you change that story is to go there and to shift the perceptions of it through the right series of questions. And it's important to have somebody to help you who is just as committed to helping you get over your victim story. So let me know, send me a private message if this is resonating with you or if anything came up for you that, that resonates, um, send a comment and I would be happy to see if you qualify to have uh, Kim get on a call with you and do a strategy session to see where that where that constraint is and what's it going to take for you to get on the to the other side. There's no charge for that call. Um, send a private message and I'd love to hear from you. Let me know what came up in this share and tag somebody that you know who's been dealing with that for quite some time and I'd love to share this with them. See you at the next perfect time.